Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, it has been a very long day. I am getting a puppy. Yay! And her name will be Nisi. She is one of the litters of the litter that I had after my two dogs were mysteriously taken. And because of that, I've been having to do more work preparing for this particular creature. Uh, making sure that I, I ended up buying a build-a-shed, a uh, metal shed. Took us five hours to put that thing together today. Two people and following instructions. Um, after yesterday driving into town, getting six 94-pound bags of cement, plus some other items to make sure that I had a foundation for the house, that's going to be the dog house. It's a four by six shed. That is uh, four by six by six. Big enough. And I've got to do the insulation tomorrow, and the dog will probably be here by Thursday, Friday. Now, I'm taking the time to do this video because I just want to let you know that even after all of that, even yesterday, with having to haul four barrels, wheelbarrows of dirt, 50 feet each time and loading those bags of cement and bringing in a refrigerator, 80-some pound refrigerator, 89 pounds it says, and I'm exhausted. Yay! Still have to get up in the morning and do our show and handle all the business for the company and everything, but it's been a long two weeks. Let me tell you why it's been a long two weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Data Mass. Data Mass, short for Data Masters, Incorporated. Data Mass Inc. Ladies and gentlemen, Data Mass Inc. is designed to do what many of you are not able to get done. That is, record your tax credit, your deduction, your write offable or charge offable items. So that you can have your documents and forms completed. What you're going to do, you're going to go to a tax agent. You're going to get them to document the taxes for you. You're going to tell them, no, I don't need you to follow them. I'll follow myself. And you're going to take it. And then you're going to bring it to us. And then our people are going to add the information based upon your credit to your filing. It will cost you. Sorry. We... We've been training this staff to do this work that we've been able to get done. We're not doing anything illegal. We're not doing anything that we need to hide from anybody. That's why we're putting it on video. But we will assist you. All they're doing is entering the data you provide in the areas where they should go. So all of you who want this service, it is $370 not because we want to gouge or get money out of your pocket. It's because of the amount of work being done. I just told you, I've just spent two and a half weeks putting together this website. I have, let's see, five calls to the webmaster. There's been a problem uploading the site for the past week. They couldn't figure out what it was, so I had to figure it out. I cannot begin to tell you all of the stuff I went through tonight just to figure this out, as tired as I am. Even the guy that was helping me put together the shed, I had to tell him, go home. <laughs> You've been here too long. Gave him his money. I paid him $70 to help me put together a shed. No, it's money well spent, and it was worth it, and it's write offable. Ladies and gentlemen, if only you guys knew what you can write off on your taxes as a business expense. You either need to work things out as to being an LLC or a sole proprietor. Either way, you get the right stuff off. Now, here's the thing. If you get the right off your expenses, if you get the right off things, don't just take pleasure in the fact that you get the right it off. Take pleasure in the fact that if you have enough debts, if you have enough things that you write off, you are tax exempt. You don't, we have so many people that try to avoid filing taxes. You don't have to avoid filing taxes. You want to file taxes, people. You want to help reduce the debt. 
you want to help reduce the debt. Now, normally if you go with your tax agent, they're not going to tell you all the things you have the right to write off. They're not even going to do the accrual method for you. Trust me, they're not going to do the accrual method for you. You have to do the accrual method. You have to balance your books. None of you guys are balancing your books. The accrual method is just simply balancing your books. That's it. The books must balance. You guys are sending in unbalanced accounting. You're creating problems for yourself and for the so-called IRS agent. Stop creating problems, people. The more problems you create, the more problems you create. So stop creating the problem. Start helping to resolve the problem. Start writing off your debt. Now, people will say, no, I'm going to give you something and you take it for what it's worth. People will say, well, as a sole proprietor, you can't write off your living expenses. Okay, fine. As a sole proprietor, you can't write off your living expenses. So let's do something real quick. Real quick. Wake up. Necessities of life. Hyphen. The March 12th. 1933 Act. Stop listening. When you guys get back to where you need to go, see, you did the Emergency Bank Relief Act. Nobody asked about that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's May 12, 1933. Sorry, I don't know why I said March 12. Sorry, I told y'all I'm tired. I really am. All right, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it's May 12, 1933. There are two acts on May 12, 1933. Okay, pay attention. There are two acts on May 12, 1933, but you're looking for the one and you just want to do a keyword search. Necessities of life. Okay, let's do this. We're going to do control F. Wake up. Necessities of life. Stop listening. Now this is Congress, and you see the date, May 12th. We're going to make this bigger so y'all can see it. May 12th, 1933. To provide for cooperation by the federal government with the several states and territories in the District of Columbia in relieving the hardships and suffering caused by unemployment and for other purposes. Well, let's find out what those other purposes are being enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled, that Congress hereby declares that the present economic depression, the, the National Emergency Act of 1933, March 9, 1933, has created a serious emergency, and due to widespread unemployment and increasing inequity, uh, inadequacy, excuse me, same thing, inequity, inadequacy, of state and local relief funds resulting in the existing and threatening deprivation of a considerable number of families and individuals of the necessities of life and the making it imperative that the federal government cooperate effective with the federal state territory district of columbia in furnishing relief to their needy and distressed people are you needy are you distressed well according to congress you are many of you guys are underemployed not just unemployed but you're having a problem taking care of your necessities of life. So let's go to section number four, if y'all don't mind. That was number three. Still number three. Now we're going to go to number four. Pay attention. Out of the funds of the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, made available by this act. Well, now that Reconstruction Finance Corporation is FEMA. Don't tell nobody. The administrator is authorized to make grants to the several states through Social Security, to aid in the meeting of the cost of furnishing relief and work relief and relieving of the hardship and suffering caused by unemployment in the form of money, service, materials, and commodities to provide for the necessities of life. See, the necessities of life you can't be taxed for. Government has said it's their job to provide that for you. They took the gold. This was the compensation. So ladies and gentlemen, start adding up your necessities of life. Don't be unreasonable. Do not be unreasonable. Congress has not been providing for the necessities of life as they promised and said it was imperative. They said it. They said it. Look, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to copy this. Okay? We're going to put the link. Hold on now. we got to go to tinyurl. 
we're going to put the link in the description so that you guys can have it. So that you'll know that we're not creating a problem. We're just simply providing you what, what nobody else is willing to do. See, what we're doing and these individuals you guys are going to, sorry, this thing should be letting me hit enter, and it's not. Uh-oh. So I don't think it's going to let me get out of here, so i got to refresh. Recall up. Anyway, your necessities of life are right off the They're right off. Don't take my word for it. Go read it for yourself. That Congress said it is imperative that they do this. Not that I do it. Not that I do it. They said because of the existing emergency. What existed emergency? March 9, 1933, there was a declaration of an emergency. That emergency is still ongoing. And all you got to do is go to .com 911. Pull the new deal. It tells you right here. Look, they let you know this is Congress talking about the emergency. They say that there is an emergency and because it's a serious emergency. Now, look, Congress is not the only one. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt spoke up and said, look, now I therefore, Franklin D. Roosevelt, President of the United States of America, in view of such national emergency, they said that it was a serious emergency. Watch this. Wake up. Serious emergency. Stop listening. Oh, it says it can't find it nowhere, and I know that it's got serious emergency. <sighs> Let's do this. I don't think it's, yeah, it can't do the word search, sorry. It's because of the way the PDF is. Ladies and gentlemen, not only did Franklin D. Roosevelt explain about the national emergency being serious, not only when Congress made the March 9, 1933 Act, that they talk about the seriousness of the emergency. Okay, they talked about the gold hoarding as a result of the serious emergency. They talked about their need to provide for a currency as a result of the serious emergency. Not my words. These are their words. Okay, they are the ones who said serious emergency. They said that the emergency was so serious that it was impacting lives. So, ladies and gentlemen, According to Congress, and according to the President, as a result of the national emergency, they were supposed to take care of your necessities of life. So, be reasonable as to what your necessities are. And do a 1099 against the United States government, locate their EIN number, don't get it from me, because I can't help you with that. Locate their EIN number, do a 1099, go and watch the video, successful, uh, yeah, successfully completed 1099. Just put successful under the year on channel. Real simple. Watch this. Going to do this real quick. Now, I will tell you guys this because many of you are not going to understand. We can't tell you how to fill out your form under any circumstances. We cannot tell you how to fill out your form. Now, watch this. Eh, no, we got to put in Eon. Wake up successfully. 1099. Stop listening. You're just going to put in successfully 1099C. And you're going to put E on successfully 1099C. Successfully completing the 1099 AMC. Right there. You just, you're the creditor, the US is the debtor. They, remember, they promised to do that. I didn't. Don't no, no, you saw, and you're going to have the link under here. They promised to take care of your necessities. So you get to carry things forward. So go back. Go back to your date of birth. Go back to how your family struggled to put food on the table. Go back to how you had a difficult time understanding currency, finance, United States, how they never paid back the gold. Go back to that time period and create, hold on, because some of y'all are not understanding. Create, I'm going to say it again, create a fee schedule 
Be reasonable. Don't be $100 billion, quilling quadrillion dollars. That's not reasonable. If you're not reasonable, it gets ignored. It gets invalidated. You don't get to come up with nothing unreasonable. You have to do the average cost, average cost of living per person, per capita. Some of you understand what I'm saying. Those of you who get outlandish and get outrageous, you are responsible for your own stupidity and you're responsible for the consequences of your own actions. You guys must understand, I don't run Data Masters. I just created the company. I have no, I've, it was a company I owned that I gave to Data Masters free of charge. A company I own that has a history. A company I own, I gave it to the group. After training them and telling them, no, 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 this is what you're going to do. You're going to only input data. You're not going to tell people what to do. Not going to tell them how to fill out their form. They're going to provide you the information. You're going to input the information. But what they didn't know is you were going to be told, go get your taxes done first, then come to Data Masters. That way you don't have to do any math. Get your taxes done first, then come to Data Masters. We're only at Data Masters. I can't say we because I'm not a part of it. They're only inputting the information you give to them. Now, if you need more understanding about the 1099A and 1099C, hey, go ahead and do the research. The videos are right here. Now, this is um, Mr. Christopher Hauser, but go ahead and do the research. You can go to anybody, but I want you to do yourselves a favor. I want you to go and listen and see if I'm not showing you through the Eon channel exactly what is what is if I'm not showing you the information. Don't take my information for it. Test me out. Prove me wrong. Seriously. Prove me wrong. Okay? Let's see how difficult that is for you. But prove me wrong. Do the research. Don't take my word for it. Okay? Don't take my word for it because you have to stand on your own two feet. So, thank you all for letting me bring something to your information that you didn't know you had the right to do. As I, I did a video earlier today talking about the people who were technically complaining. They were complaining because they didn't understand tax credits. They didn't understand its value. Ladies and gentlemen, tax credits can be bought. They can be sold. They are dollar for dollar. Tax credits can be gifted away to someone. Tax credits can be transferred under certain conditions, and they can be assigned under certain conditions. Tax credits can be used to pay your debts, especially with corporations. Especially with corporations. Tax credits can be used to offset child support. Tax credits can be used to offset tax liens. Data masters will eventually be helping individuals offset their tax liens. But for right now, data masters is only going to be assisting people with documenting and evidencing their debt. You're going to be receiving communication. You'll have to create your own ledger. You'll have to create your own statement. Go look at IRS Tax Stop A 453. It's not their job to do that. You're not paying them for that. You're paying them to take your math and then put it in the document in appropriate spaces so that you can file in time. Data Masters at datamas, D A T A M A S dot org. Data Masters. We'll be doing more videos on it in the future. They do not start business until the 15th of February, which is three more days. Well, two more days now because it's the 13th. So it's already 9 o'clock in the evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time. Have a good day, everyone.